Hey, what's up guys? This is Brian at Whisper Status 74. Welcome to the community. Welcome to the channel. If this is the first time you are seeing me. Please consider liking and subscribing. We are real tech for real people. Today's video will be a tech therapy video. For those of you that are new to the community or new to the channel, welcome. But you might not be used to this type of video. You've been watching a lot of TV comparisons the last few months. There are over 800 videos on this channel, and the last few months there have been a lot of comparisons. But at its core, this channel and this community is always going to be discussion-based, and this is going to be one of those videos. They are tech therapy. They do focus on the emotional, psychological aspect of technology and how it affects us day-to-day. -day. That is what the channel is at its core. That's what I do and what I am most passionate about. The videos are typically 25 to 30 minutes long. Um, I've been doing them the last few months in live streams. Due to what's happening out there, everyone's schedules are all over the place. We're going to cover that as well in regards to me doing content and the launch of the Xbox Series X, the PS5, and NVIDIA GPUs. I'm going to segue all that together, and we're going to talk about it next. Now, this video is going to come off a little bit as a rant. Those of you that know me know me to be as positive as I possibly can be. I'm not a fan of toxicity on YouTube or anywhere, and I try to keep things very light. However, the launch of the Xbox Series X or the pre-orders for Xbox Series X, the disaster of the PS5, and also what NVIDIA did recently with the launch of their GPUs has got me in that mode of just want to lash out just a little bit so this video is going to be a little bit all over the map again this is what the channel is at its core these videos are one every 15 or 20 so please bear with me for those of you in the community love you guys uh, let me know what you think in the comments so the launch of the xbox series x the pre-orders i should say went live yesterday at 8 a.m and it was supposed to be handled much better than the ps5's disasterly launch now i've been part of game launches for the longest time. I'll be 46 in a few days. I am older, so I remember launches of nearly every console and was there for many midnight launches as recent as the Xbox One X, which was here on the channel. And they are always dicey. In the last number of years, the last number of launches, there's been all kinds of bundles. Um, you can't just buy the console. You have to buy, you know, PlayStation Now. You have to buy Xbox Game Pass. And I saw some bundles yesterday that were $1,500. That's not even eBay. That's on the websites having you buy. And they're all sold out. But I digress. I go back to the Xbox watch. So I wake up early as I always do. Take my kids to school. Do my routine. Drive by GameStop, which is on the way to my gym. And there's already a line out the door. I look at that location, which doesn't open till noon. There's already 15 to 20 people standing outside, which has its own ramifications for where we are in this world right now. But here they are. They're standing outside. I think to myself, oh, that's interesting. Um, this is going to be launching everywhere. Target, Walmart, Best Buy, all over. You know, it's, there's nothing to worry about. There shouldn't be that big in demand. So I drive down to where my gym is. There's another tar um, another. GameStop there. This one is actually open. And I watched two young guys walk out. I asked them if they were to pre-order. One actually pre-ordered the Xbox One S version, the digital version, and the other one was put on a waiting list. So this must be, I don't know, 9, 8.30, 9 o'clock. And this guy is already telling me he couldn't get a pre-order. That they're already out of them. And that one was able to get the digital only. This is a physical store. So the kid told me, um, kid, he's probably 20-something years old, told me that he got on a list and his other buddy has the receipt for the Xbox One S digital. So I'm thinking to myself, well, how many pre-orders were there? I walk into the store, three. Three. Now, I live in Connecticut. Um, it's not, it's a, a pretty major area in terms of being close to New York. And every GameStop within the area was done three pre-orders they have four available um ridiculous so as i'm going by the same gym there's a best buy there walk in there pre-order there just to walk in there is a line there as well as we're walking in and they're all being told you can't order 
in the store that your pre-orders have to be done online. So I walk out, load, Best Buy, sold out already. Now it's, you know, 9.30, 10 o'clock. So that's frustrating. Now I'm going to preface this video to a video I did in the beginning of February. And I reported or talked about a shortage of Xbox, PS5, and the iPhone when everything started in China. And it was February 7th, 8th. There was already 780 dead. And before I go further with this video, this is not a rant about not getting game consoles. Obviously, to be alive is fortunate. And like I said in that video, when there was 700 plus dead and that it wasn't here yet, that we should all be grateful and it's not about technology you know we all have to be very grateful and i do still echo that now that there's hundreds of thousands and we're in this kind of nightmare consoles are the last thing we should be worrying about and i know there are people in the comments that are going to say dude really it's a console so let's get past that part of it it is a tech channel what i mean by that is circling completely around to the emotional aspect of it everybody's home People have been home. They've been locked inside. Things have opened. School has started. Some of you have lost your jobs. Money's been getting hit. Finances are getting hit. You have not seen these tech therapy videos because life's been a roller coaster for me. I did a video and the quarantine first started. I did one tech therapy about HDMI 2.1, which is about these consoles. But the point is, life is inconsistent for all of us. There is a lot of fear. There's a lot of doubt. There's a lot of worry whether it's financially or not. And when I say things financially, that doesn't mean if you're talking about financial issues that you can't afford to go buy yourself a console or a TV or whatever it takes to make you feel a little bit better. And that's where we're going with the emotional aspect of these three companies. It's not about not being able to get a console. It's about the frustration. It's about the confusion. It's about the fact that during this crazy time, you decide to do pre-orders a few months before your, just, your consoles are going to launch in early November. You only have a certain amount of number that you can actually pre-order before everything is locked out. And now all of us are doing this lottery of refresh, 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 refresh. I'm not even going to get into the scalper aspect of it, of everybody that buys and puts things on eBay I mean, that does happen, obviously, it clearly happens with the GPU market. You can see things on eBay and Craigslist already. That is neither here nor there. I'm talking about the companies. There is so much pain out there. There is real loss. There is real death in our communities and my own community, people that I know. Tech is an escape for me. The channel started because I had several defective TVs. And even with all things happening in life, those TVs not working made things worse. It's a service industry. You pay for something to function. I pay these companies to do a service, provide that service. And that usually works well. You buy a game, you play a game. Except when it comes to pre-ordering and these launches. Then it's feast or famine. I know why they do it. There's no secret behind it. Make people want your product more. But that's not necessary. These products, especially the GPU market with NVIDIA, are so sought after that they would sell out anyway. But we knew about these consoles coming, why I talked about that video in February, before the whole world went upside down. So we've all been through a lot, some more than others. Some of you are still out there working, some are not working anymore. Either way, some of you are really looking forward to these consoles. And I am as well. I can tell you why at the end of this video, why I could care less. This rant isn't about me not getting a console. I'm completely at peace with it. The problem I have is for those of you that are out there struggling now, that wanted one of these. And it's not that you can't have one. That's easy enough to get over. It's the confusion. Some of you have not left your home all that much. Now you're driving in a panic state to three different GameStops. I did it. I haven't been in a GameStop since all this happened. And here I am at one. And then the girl behind the counter gives me this incredulous look like I'm nuts for being there asking for a pre-order. You go to Microsoft, 
your own website is crashing. I mean, you're Microsoft. Steering me to Best Buy, Target, all sold out. It's not about the consoles. It's about you have a lot of people out there that are really, really stressed. They're really down. They're struggling anyway. They're bummed out anyway. And you put this carrot out there and you can't deliver it. So I'm watching the Crisis Remaster. Um, don't buy it. I have it for Xbox One X. It's a remaster. And I was watching Digital Foundry today. And several times, I love Digital Foundry, by the way. Several times in the video about Crisis Remaster, not the PC version, they reference the PS5 and the Series X several times. Meaning they're talking about, well, hey, when these consoles come out, they might, they might do this, they might do that. Even though the game's not officially supported, it's going to do this, maybe it'll do that, maybe it won't. And that's key. Meaning they're already deferring to this new console that you're going to run out and need and you have to have. Um, being part of all the console launches for many years, it was always for that killer app. You know, Microsoft in 2000, 2001 was Halo. They're like, wow, Project Gotham Racing. Oh my God, you know, Dead or Alive. Uh, the Mario games of the past. And over the years, there hasn't been launch titles. We're going to circle back to why I don't even care at this point. But what I mean is this want creates a want that's not even there. Now you have to have it because you can't have it. Now you start making decisions that do affect you financially. So my wife is going through the websites yesterday, just seeing if she can get one, just for ha-has. Now, we're going to go really quickly back to the Xbox One launch. Day one, I just threw that controller away, actually, because the thing was, it didn't last very long. That Xbox failed. But it was Xbox One. It was the launch. It was um, before my birthday, which is actually in a couple days, which will be September 27th, when the Xbox One launched. And for my birthday, she gives me the you know, the Amazon card saying, this is what I got you. So I'm expecting to see the console, which would have been great. Instead, I was a $780 price tag for, you know, a couple games, game, Xbox Live, the whole thing. And I remember feeling instantly terrible that you're spending that much money on this console and hopefully I end up getting it. Then there was this whole part, maybe it might get canceled, whatever. So what I remember about that, though, is that she actually bought that pre-order in the summer. It wasn't like a week before the consoles were coming out or eight weeks or even a few months. There was ample time to get your hands on it. That launch was a mess. That console was an absolute mess. I remember buying that console and I mark my words, this will happen again, where I bought the Ghosts on Xbox One. My buddies bought it for the 360. It was a mess. The game was barely better. Then there was that, which one do I buy? Uh, there's not a free upgrade. And I remember being extremely underwhelmed by that console. I ended up getting the PS4 later and had, I think, Killzone was the game that I played. I thought it was a bit better, but I was pretty disappointed. Most console launches are a little bit disappointing. Everyone's getting used to know how to learn to use the hardware. The games are typically not killer apps. The 360 launch was amazing. You know, Call of Duty uh, was a Call of Duty 2, actually. Um, you had... You know, again, Project Gotham Racing, the games were HD. I remember that launch, an absolute nightmare. So it's not new. The problem is, what we're going through here as a world, not a country, as a world, is new. These companies know that we're struggling. They know that you're home, that you're hurting. Depression is a thing. They know that most of the clientele that is into gaming, that is into this, can be a group that just wants to sit down and enjoy it. And you're doing this now. That is my challenge with this. That is my challenge with the confusion. You don't want people in big groups. You don't want people rushing out there. Yet those people that are a little bit scared are rushing out there. Because you're telling me that I can't get the console you're telling me that Walmart, Target, already sold out? Amazon sold out? Delay them. Have some clarity. People do not want to sit there and try to play this lotto of hopefully getting. I have people I know that have taken out five or different pre-orders hoping one of them hits. If you remember the Wii, P3, 
People, wealthy people, bought these huge bundles to have it canceled before it gets delivered. So, we're going to jump into NVIDIA real quick. Um, we all know PC gaming changes rapidly. Extremely quickly, if you're a PC gamer, you're used to your stuff becoming, maybe not obsolete, but, you know, it loses value rather quickly. You might have the biggest graphics card for a minute, it's the strongest, it's the fastest, and then you might want to upgrade your CPU, and then the new CPU is going to be next month, and then they're sold out, you can't find them. It's a nightmare. Any of these PC builds that you watch, you look at their, their recommendations in the description, you follow that back, and they're sold out, you can't find them. It's, it's a nightmare. So, I have a 1080 Ti. I bought that graphics card. I ended up getting it during the cryptocurrency nightmare. So I overpaid for it. I had two 980s in SLI. Those of you that know the SLI is the two cards working together. It's not really supported anymore. I needed to jump up. I wanted 4K gaming. Boom, boom, boom. So I overpaid for that card. But I love the card. The card is still a beast. And then shortly after, the 2080s came out. As they always do. Great card. RTX was the marketing behind that, though they had very few games that actually supported it. And you had to choose between RTX at 1080p or 4K at below 60. So you're thinking to yourself, why am I buying this card? It wasn't even ready for prime time. Then they had some firmware updates, the drivers got better, performance got better, great card. 2070, great card. The 1080 Ti is still doing its thing, but ray tracing was the marketing. That I almost chased. But when I saw the performance, I said, no, nah, it's okay. 2080 T com Ti comes out. Beast of a card. Beasts. A couple thousand dollars. Now, it's not a Titan card. It's not one of those cards that you buy knowing it's a novelty. It's a real card. A lot of you watching this video own it. It's a beast. And then NVIDIA decides to tell you that a new 3070 or 3080 at $400 gives you twice the performance. Now, technology happens. I get it. But you cannibalize your own clients. And those of you that know in the comments, you guys get super insecure about which TV is better. Someone um, doesn't like your TV. It gets crazy in the comments. Graphics cards and CP was on another level. So you have a lot of people out there that spent thousands of dollars getting a 2080 Ti. Now, there's a lot of people laughing at that. Now, if you're a wealthy person that bought a 2080 Ti, you aren't even offended by it. You're going to throw it in the garbage and buy the next card. But most of you are saving up for that card. You sold your cards at a loss and got that card. For NVIDIA during this crazy time to tell you that this next card is going to be four or $500. Oh, and you can't get it. Oh, it's sold out. That's what I'm talking about. It's not technology moving too fast. That's always going to happen. It's what you're doing to your clients. It's what you're doing to your customers. During this crazy time, when you're aware of it, when you knew there was going to be shortages in February, the whole world is upside down. And this is what you're doing to your clients. That's the challenge I have. That's what I'm ranting about. For NVIDIA, yes, it's amazing. You want to knock it out of the park. Do you really have to beat the hell out of your own clientele? Your highest end clientele? Some people just bought that card. I was looking at that card. I wanted ray tracing. So what you have done to me is I don't care. So I'm going to hang back. I already have 4K. I already have HDR. I already have more games than I can begin to play. Those of you that know me know I haven't even played much content. What you're making me do is sit back. I'm not giving you my money. For the Xbox Series X, I already have a PC that can do 4K60 with HDR. What are you offering me at launch? What am I going to get crazy for? Chase your console around to have, play a better version of Gears of War 5? I already played that on, on PC at 4K60 with HDR. So what are you offering me? Not Halo Infinite. No real games that I need to play. <clears throat> My point is, don't get tricked into leaping at it. For your NVIDIA owners, I'm sorry. 
The 2080 Ti is an absolute beast. Don't let this make you upset. Don't let this make you say, oh, I can't believe I have the crappiest card. Because when it comes to GPUs, GPU, $2,000, costs more than a TV. And you buy that knowing you're going to be king of the hill for a while. It's a problem, obsolescence. Yeah, it's a problem with technology. I get it. But these companies right now are doing this consciously. You're consciously doing this to your clientele that's out there starving. Throw them free content. Tell them, hey, we're going to delay these consoles, but I want you each to have one. This is how it's going to go. The first wave of pre-orders are going to be on September, blah, blah, blah. We guarantee there will be another group of them coming. But the problem is you've put your pre-order so close to your launch date, you've given yourself no room. You've also done this while everyone's kids are going back to school. All over the world. It is about what's happening out there. And yes, it's nothing in comparison to what to death and loss and what everybody's struggling with. But when I say, I love this term, um, real world problems. Love that term. When I was going through this issue with my TVs, there wasn't a person in the world that felt bad for me. Even though I was spending thousands of dollars that I worked very hard for to buy a bunch of defective TVs from every brand you can imagine. Everyone's like, look, man, grand scheme of things, what's the problem? Well, I had pretty sick people in my family at that particular time. Life and death stuff. And you say to yourself, hey, man, it's just a TV. Yeah, here's the thing. The real world problems, the little things, are what push you over. You can survive all the hard stuff. You can survive the loss of your job. You can survive the loss of a loved one. It's the little things that can hurt you. When you're sitting down and these things don't function. It's a service industry. Hit power, it goes on. You buy a game, it plays. When you're tired, when it's late, when you have a few minutes to relax. That's what it's about. Or it's with your family and you're sharing it. Or with your friends, depending on how old you are. So my issue in closing with this long video is you're doing it now. You're doing it now. Your own clientele is struggling. And you're putting a shortage out there? You're putting a shortage out there on people? You have them lining up outside of stores to tell them you can't do pre-orders in store? No clarity? No explanation of when it'll be available? Oh, just keep on trying. Because no one else has anything else to do right now. Nothing better to do right now than sit there and keep trying to refresh a page and hope to slip into that Best Buy. That's stress. My point is, why are you adding stress now? Why are you trying to hurt people now? Yeah, the NVIDIA thing is a sensitivity thing. I don't have a 1080 or 2080 Ti. But it bothers me. This video isn't bothering me because it affects me. It bothers me because I know it affects you. I have a million games to play. Am I annoyed? Absolutely. But I have more tech than I can have time to use. More tech than I can actually enjoy. And I'm going to start enjoying it. But I'm not going to overpay for a PS5. I'm not going to get nervous and spend $900 on a PS5 with an extra controller I'm not going to use for PlayStation Plus or whatever. We'll all be playing the same Black Ops next in November. Give that game to people if they buy a new console. Bleeding your own clients. And you're bleeding them now. During this time, you're bleeding them now. That's what I'm talking about. Serve us. It's a service business. You can't provide it. Delay it. Announce it's delayed. Put your pre-order in. So, as we're going through this uncertain time, I have two kids. They're back in school. 
the schedule is all over the map. Many of you are going through this right now. I mean, life is like this for everybody out there. I'm a small YouTube channel. I'm just you. I'm not a professional YouTuber. The channel's tiny. It's not sponsored. That's why I'm up here talking about it. I understand. I have a career outside of this. I don't have time to be refreshing websites to try to buy it, to beg you to take my money. And then you're telling me maybe I'll get it. So, Xbox. I have a PC. An Xbox to me is just a PC. I'll get it whenever it comes out. What would I play anyway? Forza 4K? I already play it on PC. Gears 5? Not a great game anyway. I already played it on PC. PS5? Look, I want PS5 because of the exclusives. Plenty of games from PS4 Pro to play. But what are you really offering me? A rocky launch? Maybe it doesn't work. I don't know. But you're not going to get me. NVIDIA. I'll wait all day. Why? I have 4K. I have HDR. I have the TVs that can play it. You're not offering me anything I don't already have. Many of you that I do feel for are looking for 4K for the first time. That is where I feel bad. You don't have HDR. I'm not going to chase ray tracing, spend thousands, throw away my graphics card. Because you're offering $400. Oh, but you're not offering them. You still let people buy them in truckloads to sell them on eBay. You can't figure out how to stop that? Microsoft, NVIDIA, you can't figure out how to stop that? can't figure out that it's a bot buying a thousand of them act like you care a little bit show some empathy for your own clients your own customers that spend money for unfinished games unfinished software updates that includes tvs take care of your clients take care of them because right now more than ever they need a little bit of that love so when they're working their new job, or they just got laid off, or they lost their job, or they lost a loved one, they can find that little bit of time to play a game, play a console, whatever, watch a movie. Again, the grand scheme of things, we are extremely lucky. Many of us, I'm extremely fortunate, though we have had real loss and real scary moments in my own community, affecting my career, family's career, loved one's career. I haven't seen my family. Tech is always going to be that thing for me. It's always going to be that thing that's there for you. It's supposed to serve you, not hurt you. And this isn't defective products. These are companies that know they couldn't fulfill it. And to me, that's a conscious decision. That's my rant. Is in a time where people are scared, worried, depressed, you're doing this to them. Now, say that I'm overreacting or being dramatic. It is tech therapy. I read every single comment in all of these videos. And many of you are struggling with this. And in the grand scheme of things, does it matter? Yeah, it does. Because your sanity is attached to it. And it's an escape from all the nightmare that's out there. It's an escape. Many of you are going to look at your current consoles as less... Which is why I brought up the Digital Foundry video. Because now you're already thinking, well, if I get the new console, it's going to do this or that. Well, it'll be like the Xbox One X. When it came out, it supported a bunch of games. They look great. Battlefield 1 took a year to support. Don't chase it. Unless you really need it, hang back. Let them serve you. In closing, we have the holidays coming up. It's a stressful time for everyone. It's going to be cold. Those of you that work in restaurant industries are going to lose your jobs again. It's a crazy time. And you won't be able to get the consoles for your family or for yourself. That's what I mean. Instead of just saying, all right, cool, I'm going to buy this, I'm going to have it, whatever. That's what I'm talking about. And to me, that's what these companies are doing consciously. Now, this video is, you know... The second day after the launch of their pre-orders. I may be wrong and tomorrow they give you a whole bunch. Here's the challenge with that. 
some of you have been stressed out for the last two days over it. Driving around, doing whatever you do, refreshing, spending hours you don't have. And stress you don't need. For nothing, if it turns out to be a bunch of them are available tomorrow. I won't overspend for one. I don't need one. Now, I'm a YouTuber. It's advantageous to have one. The channel is not based on any specific company or product, so it doesn't really matter. I'll find things to talk about and to cover. But for many of you, this is a struggle. Don't struggle. Don't be upset about it. Remember, it's a service business. You're their client. And let them serve you. Don't give them your money and just wait it out. There'll be very little to play on the first couple days anyway. As far as NVIDIA, if you got your hands on a card, that's great. But if you have a 2080 Ti or a 2080 or 2070, that card is amazing. Those cards are amazing. You bought, you paid for it. You're not a fool. But those companies, or at least that company, does make you feel like you are a fool. And you fooled me. This video is 30 minutes long. Um, if any of you are still there, love you guys. This is a tech therapy video. I'm Brian from Whisper Status 74. Let me know what you think in the comments. During this uncertain time, during everything that is happening out there, this is just extra things that offer more confusion, more ne or negativity and toxicity when we need less of all of that. All right, guys. Uh, long video. I apologize if it was too long or if it was overly negative. Love you guys. I hope you're all well. I hope to see you in the comments. I'll talk to you soon.